And uh, I want to continue uh, talking about uh, transformation. Say transformation. Transformation. Yeah. And this transformation, I say, it begins with the mind and avoid some transformation if we are turning as the renewal of the mind. The first and foremost aspect of preparing yourself for transformation and to glorify God is to have your mind renewed. Romans 12 and chapter 2 which uh, is our key verse says and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God you have got to have new ideas and attitudes and be changed by the entire renewal of your mind. This means a complete overhaul. A complete overhaul of the way you think. It is something that must happen consciously. You must be conscious that you are thinking is changing your thought pattern is changing and you must consciously engage in training your mind to focus on focus your mind on things that advance your life towards your destiny the vision god has given to you you must do it consciously and continuously. It's an everyday affair. Apostle Paul, speaking in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. The last part he says, is being renewed day by day. There was a renewal taking place in his life day by day. There must be a day by day renewal. You are thinking your mind must be renewed. As you set your mind to love God, you can never be disappointed as a person. As you set your mind to love God, to obey God, to do what God instructs in His Word, and you consciously uh, decide to, uh, to engage your mind, to think of those thoughts, you can't be disappointed. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't uh, be disappointed. Colossians chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 says, Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. I want you to know that when Paul is writing this letter to the Romans, he is writing to believers. He is writing to people who have given their lives to, uh, to Jesus Christ, people who are saved. And he said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. So the transformation is seen after your mind is what? 
is renewed. Now, we are, we are saying here that then it is possible uh, to give your life to Jesus but not see transformation in your life. Is it true? Because, because your mind is not what? Your mind is not renewed. Your thinking pattern is still the same. It's the same like a person who has not known God. You still carry the same, you have still the same strongholds, the same opinions, the same ideas. Your thinking is still that of the old man. But Paul, Apostle Paul is saying, be renewed. Be renewed. Be renewed and let the new man who is renewed in the image of God. Let him take over. Let him start to live. Let him start to talk. Let him start to be seen. The new man. Why do we keep lapsing into, uh, into um, allowing the old man to, be, to resurface in our lives? Because our minds are not uh, renewed. So to be renewed in the spirit of your mind refers to being renewed in the character and, attitude, and the attitude of your mind. It refers to being renewed in the character and attitude of your mind. And one of the beautiful things you can do for yourself as a Christian is to always build in your mind the right picture of the kind of life you want to lead. You must visualize where you are heading in life. It pays for you to activate your faith eyes or the eyes of your faith. It pays to activate them, to see beyond the horizon and envision yourself living the very best of what God has planned for you. God has never created us to suffer or to live an average life. He created us to excel and to flourish in all areas of our lives. You must envision you living in that realm of the kind of life God has ordained for you or living God's dream for your life. Romans chapter 4 verse 17 says as it is written I have made you a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were God is talking about Abraham in this verse. And the Bible is saying that he's talking about God who brings to life, to quicken, is to bring to life, to bring to life things that are dead. May God bring to life your vision, amen, amen. your hopes, your dreams, and everything that God bring to life in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 So God who quicken, who brings to life things that are dead and calls those things that are not as if they are. God called Abraham the father of nations when he had no child and when it was naturally impossible for him because he was old 
and his wife was barren. But God calls him a father of many nations. And God changed his name from Abraham to Abraham to reflect his new identity. To reflect his new identity. And we see that the Bible says Abraham believed God. In his heart, in his mind, he tuned himself to think like a father of many nations. To think like a father of many nations. In Judges chapter 6, verse 12, God calls Gideon a mighty man of valor. Mighty man of valor. And God tells him through the angel, Go in this thy might and save Israel against the Midianites. And Gideon starts to complain. Which means that Gideon, at that particular time, he was not seeing himself. He was not seeing himself the way God was seeing him. He was seeing that he's coming from a small, his family was small, and again, he was the youngest in his family. We serve a God who calls things that are not as if they are. God calls you a blessed husband, yes. a blessed mother. When you are still struggling as a father, as a husband, God calls you good, good husband, good father, a good man. Which means God is not looking at your struggles. He's looking at what he has ordained you to come. I like calling men here man of God. Man of God. I know some of them are struggling. Praise the Lord. Amen. But they are men of God. That's what God has called them. God didn't bring them to this church, to this ministry, to destroy them. He called them to make them great. Amen. He called them to be the light. Amen. 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 They are men of God. I want you to help me by calling the men in the church here men of God. If you meet him, you say, how are you man of God? Amen. 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 Wives, you are men of God in your homes. Amen. 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 They are priests. They are prophets. They are kings. Yes. They are men of God. Hallelujah. Amen. God has blessed you with a man of God in your home. Elijah said when he was confronted by soldiers from, uh, from the king, and he said, and they said, uh, uh, man of God, come down. The king wants to see him. He said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume me. Ladies, you are also women of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yes, so don't be disturbed of what people think of you. Be concerned of what God thinks about you. Amen. People may not think good of you. They may say this man or this lady is not educated. Or this lady comes or this man comes from a very primitive village. They may look at your physical uh, size. They may look at your financial uh, disposition. Don't be disturbed by what people think about you. Be concerned with what God thinks about you. God says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, I know the thoughts that I think 
towards you. Say me. Mm -hmm. Say the Lord, thoughts of peace, Amen. not of evil, Amen. to give you an expected end. May your expected end in the Lord come quickly in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And may you reach your destiny in God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May you be favored beyond your contemporaries. Amen. May you excel and be a great man, Amen. a great woman Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 A man of God called Tiel of Osborne he said these words that those who are concerned about what people think about them, they are slaves of the last people they talked to. Those who are concerned about what people think about them, they are slaves of the last people they talked to. The last person that talked to you, you become a slave if you are so much concerned of what people say about you. You can reach, you can uh, meet one person and he says, oh, you are a wonderful sister. Another one also says again, oh, you meet another one says, oh, sister, you are beautiful. And maybe you meet another one and says, you are very ugly. You become a slave of the last person you talk to. You forget another one called you wonderful, another one called you beautiful. You only remember the one that called you what? Yeah, called you again. So, I want to encourage you. We are not learning this. Uh, I mean, uh, we, we want every person to make progress in his life. We want to see every brother, every sister, every family living and reaching their potential in God. We want to see people blessed. We want to see people rising in ministry, rising in their careers. We want to see people moving forward. That's why we are learning this. And we are saying it has to happen fast. Where? In our minds. The mind must be renewed. The mind must be renewed. The mind must be renewed. When God saved my life, and um, I became a believer, I believe God has helped me to renew my mind. The way I think about people, the way I think about life, the way I think about ministry. Praise the Lord. Amen. The way I think about ministry, the way I look at people, I'm not walking or living my life every day waiting to see somebody who, who will abuse me so that I can add him on my list of enemies. <laughs> but I'm every day looking to increase my circle of friends, Amen. my circle of connections, people I can relate to, people I can be able to interact with. <clears throat> so I'm not walking fearing that somebody will hurt me or somebody will do this to me. And even if somebody did something bad to me. One thing that God helps me is that I'm very easy to forget. I will not think about it much. And I make progress. I want to encourage you. The Bible is saying there in Romans 12, verse 2, where, which is our key verse, that be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may know that which is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So we only come into the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God 
when our mind is renewed and the transformation is taking place, the transformation is taking place, then we are able to come to that good, acceptable, and perfect uh, will of God. I want to encourage you that it is you who can limit yourself, not the devil. The devil has no power to limit your life. I want you to know that. You only limit yourself by your thinking. You are able to live the life that God has ordained for you. But you must start to think in that direction. You must start to think in that direction. You must see your future with the eyes of your mind. You must see your future with the eyes of your mind. Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You must see your future with the eyes of your mind. With the eyes of your mind. What is possible in the mind, it is then also possible in your life. It is also possible in your life. As Christians, we live by faith, not by sight. We see where we are going. We focus our mind there, our thoughts there. Even before we have reached there, focus our mind there. We build a picture in our minds. Before we began uh, putting up uh, the, 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 the new church, you can remember we had pictures here of that uh, building. It was just a picture. And even when you come to the office here, I have a few pictures of that uh, building. It's a picture of what? Where we are going. It's a picture of where we are going. You must have a picture of where your family is going. As a father. As a father. You must see, see that. You must visualize it. You must see it with the eyes of your mind and see that as a family, we are going there. And you are seeing it in your mind. You must see as a person, this is where I am going in my career. Focus it in your mind. You visualize it. And as you visualize it, as you think about it, your system and your life gets tuned to your thoughts and you start moving in that direction. That's why we say it is very dangerous for you to unite yourself to people who are not heading anywhere and they become your friends. People who talk negative. People who have no vision. People who cannot say this is where I'm going. And they become your friends and very dear friends. And every day you are making sure they are talking to you, occupying hours of your life. I want to assure you that you can't go far. You can't go far. You must disconnect yourself with urgency from those kinds of friends. Yes. People are only talking about others. 
and what bad things people have done. Praise the Lord. Amen. The bad things people have done, and they know everybody who has sinned. They know the pastors who have committed sin. And that's a topic every day. They become your friends. My brother, my sister. Run away from them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Where you are going and the picture of your life in your mind needs an environment where you can continue cultivating that, those kind of thoughts so that you move where you are heading. The young people will keep telling you, make sure you are careful. The kind of friends you keep, what you read, what you watch, what you see, it's very uh, key in moving your life uh, 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 in the direction of your vision or in the direction of your destiny. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask, or think according to the power that worketh within us. Within us. When we think right, when we think godly, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly about what we think. You are thinking of a blessed family. You are thinking of a joyful family, a peaceful family. You are not thinking of beating your husband or beating your wife. You are not thinking about that. You are thinking of a peaceful family, joyful family. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above. You are thinking that uh, you are living a life, a victorious life, overseen. God is able to do exceedingly abundant. Beyond that, you are thinking you are prosperous. Our God is the God who prospers his children. It is God who giveth power to make wealth. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you think and what we ask. I want you to Know this as when your thinking changes, you are talking changes, your decisions change, your actions change, your relationships change, your performance changes. And ultimately, your results change. If your thinking changes, your talking will change, your decisions will change, your actions will change, your relationships will change, your performance will change, and ultimately, the results will change. If your mind doesn't change, your results can change, your performance can change. And of course we are saying your talking will be the same, your actions will be the same, year after year, will just be the same. But when you think it changes, the child of God, you purpose to have your mind renewed. You focus on Jesus. You allow the word of God to work in your life and to bring a renewal. You submit yourself to the work and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And you keep confessing the word of God. You refuse evil thoughts. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Many times, even when I'm, uh, uh, I, I just be walking, doing my own things, once Satan tries to slow to give a thoughts, I say, I curse. Curse your thoughts, Satan, in the name of Jesus. I refuse them. Amen. Amen. Satan can try to slot evil thoughts in your mind. You refuse it. Amen. Amen. And allow your mind to dwell on thoughts that are godly. On thoughts that are godly. Because your life moves in the direction of your thoughts. As we have already said. Moves in the direction of your thoughts. I am challenging you in the name of Jesus. I want to see a great transformation in your lives. Amen. By December this year, 2020, we want to see movement. We want to see uh, you at a new level. Because your thinking has changed. Because your mind is renewed. Refuse evil thoughts, negative thoughts. The Bible gives us authority and power to cast down evil thoughts, evil ideas, dogmas, thought patterns that are, I mean, cannot advance you. You cast them down. You pull them down. You destroy them. You cleanse your mind with the blood of Jesus. You claim the mind of Christ. You crucify the carnal mind. You lay to the altar of God and say, Die in the name of Jesus. And you say, I put on the mind of Christ. And you refuse evil thoughts. And allow God to fill your mind with his thoughts. With his thoughts. You will see your life change. There will be a great transformation in your life. Things that have been disturbing you, they will disappear. Amen. The weaknesses, the shortcomings you have been having, they will all disappear. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Many of the things we do are not instinctive. They are things we take time to think about. Before you abuse a person, it's just not instinctive. You decide to abuse, but you decide. You say, if I meet Margaret, she will see me today. Before I got saved, I was a very bad person. She will see me. And when you meet her, you begin abusing her. Serious abuses. about it. It doesn't do anything when you abuse a person and insult a person. When people abuse you, forget about it. Don't even think about it. Even if I had something to talk about about me, I would be bothered. Oh, come here, sit. What did you say about me? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'll be wasting my time. I should be engaged in prayer. I should be engaged in reading the word. What a person says about me doesn't count. It's what God says about me. Amen. 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 We don't move forward by what people say. People can say you are a dog. People can say you are a what? It doesn't make you a dog. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are a chosen generation. Amen. You are a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the apple of God's eye. Amen. Amen. And you're moving from glory to glory, favor to favor. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I challenge you that let our minds be renewed. Let us think godly. Let us refuse evil thoughts. Let us resist the devil. Let us. Uh, experience the transformation that God 
wants us to have. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning that you love us so much and you have allowed us to be here to celebrate Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you for the worship. We thank you for the word. I thank you for my brothers and sisters. I pray in the name of Jesus you may deliver them from wrongful things. Deliver them from having thoughts of the old man. And Lord, I pray that you help them to renew their minds and to fill their minds with your thoughts. Thoughts that are good. Thoughts that are noble. Thoughts that are peaceful. Thoughts that advance them in their lives, in their families. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. I ask for your hand to be upon them. Bless your children through this week. In everything they do. Bless them with good health. Bless them with, with peace. Provide for every family. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I stand against Satan and the kingdom of darkness. Yes. Who has divided and is ascending demons to attack brethren. Yes. To attack their health, attack their finances. Yes. I stand against you in the name of Jesus. Yes. In the name of Jesus. And I rebuke you Satan. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke demon spirits. Sent to attack brethren in the name of Jesus Christ. Cover, cover all the brethren in the blood of Jesus. We thank you, Father, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and believed. Everybody says amen. Amen and amen.